This is a collapsible squatty potty. And these are 3D printed non-slip feet. Let me show you how to make them. So we're in Fusion 360, and the first thing we wanna do is input the dimensions of our feet as user parameters. So I'm gonna to go to Modify, Change Parameters, and then make a new user parameter. The first one is going to be Pad Length. Then we have Pad Width, 0.6 inches, and our Pad Thickness. I'm putting this in as a user parameter so we can change it if we want later on. And for now, I'll set that as 0.15 inches. I made the length and width of the pad a little bit smaller than the actual foot. That way the edges are inset from the edge of our piece and we have a nice clean finish. So I can hit OK and then create a box. The length of our box is going to be pad length, hit tab, pad width. For the height, that will be pad thickness. So that could be our pad right there, but it probably wouldn't work very well. We're gonna be printing this out of TPU, and TPU is commonly used to make the soles of shoes. And on the bottom of shoes, you usually have some sort of waffle tread pattern. I'm gonna emulate that here to hopefully help with its non-slip properties. So I'm going to create a new box on top of here, start it from the corner, and this is going to form our tread pattern. For the length of the trad, we're gonna do a fraction of the pad length. So let's try pad length divided by 10. For the width, let's try pad width divided by four. And for the height, maybe pad thickness divided by three. It doesn't need to be too thick, so I think that will be good. Hit OK. And now we're going to create a rectangular pattern. We're gonna change the type to features and select our extrude feature as the pattern. The directions will be the width and length of the pad, Distance type will be extent, and for this first direction, the total distance extent will be pad width. For the other direction, the total distance will be pad length. And now we can start adjusting the quantities until it has a nice tread pattern. So I'm just going to turn these up, switch to a top view. It looks like four is good for the width, and nine is good for the length. But we have a little bit of a problem. We're overshooting our edge. So we actually need to adjust the distance extent. For the distance, we need to subtract one of our little treads. So we're gonna do pad width minus pad width divided by three, I believe, or divided by four. There we go, and that brings us right to the edge. We can turn the quantity down to three. So we're basically doing the full width minus the width of one of those little treads. And then for this direction, it's going to be pad length minus pad length divided by 10. And then we can turn the quantity down. Maybe I'll change it to seven. There we go. Now we have a nice uniform spacing. Hit OK. So now we have a nice tread pattern, but we need to attach this to our piece. We could use double-sided tape, but I want something that's a little more secure. So I'm going to use screws. So I have a number eight wood screw right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure the head diameter so we can input that as a user parameter, 0.31. We also need to know the shaft diameter. We're gonna make this a little bigger than the actual outer extent of the threads. That way the screw can pass through easily. So shaft diameter, 0.175. Now the last thing we want is our screw head sticking out past our treads. So we need a really good countersink. The first thing I'm gonna do is gonna create a sketch on top of our treads and draw a circle at each of these points. Screw head diameter. Now I'm going to select those circles, right click, extrude, and extrude them just to the bottom of our treads. That bottom of our treads is where our screw head will actually sit. So I'm gonna create a hole. So one hole there, one hole there. Change our hole type to a countersunk hole. The diameter of our countersink is going to be screw head diameter. The diameter of the shaft is our shaft diameter, user parameter. I know through experience that if we change this angle to 60, then the conical part will extend further and that will actually fit our screw. And there we go, that's our pad right there. We can go to 3D print. We're gonna be printing these pads out of TPU, which stands for thermoplastic polyurethane. This stuff is super cool. It's a flexible filament, which means you can print things that are rubbery, like shoe soles, tires, phone cases, 
It's really amazing stuff, but it's a little notorious. It's known to be difficult to print with. And I was pretty trepidatious about using this filament until one of my good friends who has the exact same printer as I do, he got some TPU and he used it successfully. So I got his print settings, used that as a starting point, and it really demystified the whole process. So I'm gonna show you my print settings. Hopefully it will tell you a little bit about why you use the settings that you do. But my number one suggestion is to find a friend who has the same printer, find someone on the internet even, and use their print settings as a starting point. But for my print settings, let me walk you through it. I used a TPU filament profile in Prusa Slicer as a starting point and then used my friend's filament settings to tweak it. So here we go. We'll go into the filament settings. I'm just bringing up his message so I can tell you exactly what I changed. First thing is the temperature, most important. So let's go to filament. I'm printing this at 230 degrees Celsius. First layer, bed temperature is 80 degrees. Second layer, bed temperature, or subsequent layer, bed temperature is 75 degrees. Now we can go to the cooling. Very important part when you print TPU, you usually wanna turn off the cooling fan for at least the three layers. Some people print without a cooling fan for the entire thing, but of course your results may vary. I'm disabling the fan for the first three layers. And then after that, the minimum fan speed is 70%, maximum is 90%. And finally, let's look at the speed. Most important thing here is that you turn your first layer speed down. Usually you get better TPU prints if you print slower. So my first layer speed is 15 millimeters per second and all of the other layers are the default for this print profile. I'm gonna export this profile and make it available for download. Also take screenshots if you can't import it into your slicer and hopefully it brings you some success. So we're gonna print this with two perimeters and 15% infill. One of the cool things about TPU is by varying the infill percentage, you change how flexible your final product is. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's go print. We're printing this with D3D Sigma TPU. This stuff comes in 500 gram spools, which is really handy because TPU is expensive. So if you just wanna try this material out, you don't have to commit to a whole lot of it at once. And I'm printing it on the textured sheet on my Prusa i3 Mark III S. TPU adheres super well to the textured sheet, but if you print this on a smooth PEI coated sheet, you should use tape or glue because you can damage the plate when you remove your final print. As you can see, I have the doors to my enclosure open. I found that when the doors were closed, small details weren't printing very well. They were getting really muddy, and I think that's because the filament didn't have enough time to cool as the nozzle was moving around. Print is done. So TPU prints can be pretty difficult to get off the build plate. You can't just flex it like a normal rigid print and expect it to pop off. Because it's flexible, it's just gonna flex with the bed. So sometimes you gotta apply a bit of force. There we go. Check it out, bendy. It's pretty common with TPU to get a fair amount of stringing, but altogether, I am happy with that quality. This was one of my earlier prototypes. I was trying a much smaller tread pattern and as you can see, each tread kind of got skewed around in a circle. The nozzle was moving around each of these squares counterclockwise. And I think because the filament wasn't cooling very fast and because it's flexible, it was sort of pulling each square around in a circle and skewing it. So printing small details like these can be really difficult with TPU. So I just opted to use a larger tread pattern. Lovely. Screw sitting perfectly under the surface of the treads. Look at that. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how non-slip these really are. So you fold it up, flip it over. 3D printed non-slip pads. I also printed these little pads out of TPU to make up the space between the center support and each of the legs. This is gonna make the whole stool a lot more stable. There we go. Super steady, look at that. No sliding. This thing is a beast. 
I hope this video gives you the confidence to print with TPU. This is an amazing material and I'm really excited to experiment with this stuff further. You're definitely going to be seeing it in more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching and if you're interested in directly supporting this channel, I have a Patreon page with some pretty cool benefits including stickers and a patrons exclusive Instagram page. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But for everyone, thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Maybe with some more TPU.